Welcome to Rising Frequencies. Today is June 1st, 2017. Yay, June. <laughs> Yay, summer. Just about. Um, today we have a very, very interesting show. As if our last show wasn't interesting enough. We have another one. And this one's a whopper. It might actually be prolonged to two shows because of uh, the information that we're going to cover. Um, we are going to talk about the reprogramming of the moon matrix and as you guys may have heard many of you who watch this show there the moon some interesting energy has been coming out of the moon that has been controlling our matrix <clears throat> in any case this energy has been reprogrammed and it has to do with the restoration of the frog the lovely little frog energy, that, which is also known as Naga energy. The Tibetans call frogs and beings like frogs, such as snakes, uh, frogs, and even dragons, the Naga beings. And they were um, kind of mishandled and have been oppressed and, and rerouted to the negative side. Anyway, recently they have been kind of corrected. And this energy has been fixed and it has helped with the reprogramming of the moon matrix which has um, assisted us all and so we are going to be talking about this this evening evening our time in the united states and uh, we have three amazing guests as well um, and <laughs> we've got three lovely ladies from around the world who have had experiences with this that we are going to bring in with different, and it's funny because everyone has had experiences with the different animal energies that are participating with Gaia, with the earth and with, and with the transition of Gaia into new energy and what we're going through. So I can go ahead and shall I introduce these lovely ladies? All right. We have three. Number one, and I first I'll introduce us. I'm Andrea Mullaney. I'm your co-host of Rising Frequencies, and I am here as always with my lovely friend, Lisa Risingberry, and she has written uh, an amazing article on her uh, WordPress site where she talks about this energy and uh, this whole entire change. And our first guest, we have three. Our first guest is Melissa Reed, who co-authored this article because she, want, she added, she's a client of Lisa's, and she has had incredible experiences that mirror what, 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 what we've seen. So here we go, Melissa Reed. And I'm going to share my screen and pull up her beautiful photo. See if I can do this here. All right. Share your screen. Hold on a minute, guys. It's funny. I have, okay. She's beautiful. Watch. Here we go. Come on now. There we are. There's Melissa. And she is coming to us from Australia. Melissa Reed is a diploma qualified remedial massage therapist who's trained and qualified in the Dr. Vauder method of lymphatic drainage. Melissa is also trained in the clinical use of photon laser light therapy or low level laser. Uh, passionate about stress relief, energy healing, and the relaxation response with its holistic approach to healing and its effect on the body mind spirit connection. Melissa has studied the Usui method of Reiki and is attuned to Reiki master teacher level. She's also practiced the benefits of meditation for over 10 years. Melissa loves to write and dreams of being a published author in the future, detailing her journey in the hope that it helps others on the path to understanding who they really are. She loves the natural world. Its language of symbols and signs is how it and the divine communicate with her every day, and it never ceases to amaze her how magical this earth life is. So this is Melissa Reed, and she's had experiences, and she co-authored the um, article as well on the frog energy and the repro reprogramming of the moon matrix. All right, now we also have... Miss Gabrielle Orlando, 
Gabriella, and she was with us in our last show with her beautiful horse, Petrol, who has recently passed, but who has a very important uh, role in our development and who has assisted humanity tremendously. And so I am going to pull up Gabriella. Let's see, I have her photo as well. There she is. Can you guys see? Yeah. All right. There's Gabriella with Petrol, a beautiful white horse. Now, Gabriella is not your average horse owner. Her gifts and connection are beyond belief. Gabriella is a certified level two equinology equine body worker. She's also studied and obtained certification in equine myofacial release. Uh, it's the John Barnes method. Through equinology and has studied craniosacral therapy under Tom and Yolanda Mays at Integrated Equine Therapies. She's currently studying osteopathic technique, techniques at Integrated Equine Therapies. Through her mediumship and the use of specific body and energy work techniques, Gabriella works to establish a dialogue with the horse and in turn help facilitate the self-healing mechanisms that exist within him. And her, uh, we will give websites also, but um, later in the show, but just so you know, her website is equineenergybodywork.com. All right, now I'm going to find Sana. And now we have a lovely lady coming to us from Sweden. Here we go. All right, I have several photos of Sana. Here's one. All right, Sana Tarnström. Sana Tarnström is here on Earth to teach, to guide, and to be a way shower in grace consciousness. She's an artist of the heart, a life coach, and star shaman. With her heart song and personal connections to Mother Earth, the multidimensional realms and universal energies, she works on all levels of the spectrum to help heal humanity. Sana is trained in Silver Star Reiki healing and has completed the Akashic Records Certification Program and is now a certified consultant. She uses her ancient star shamanic wisdom and merges it with the new knowledge and tools and ways of modern times. Sana also works on healing energy, on energy healing with sound and frequency harmonics and wishes to inspire humanity with song to open our hearts and to remember the magic that is in each of us. Sana encourages everyone to find the magic of life in the smallest details and to live in sync with the heartbeat of Gaia, our mother and father. She encourages us to let life flow and to find that inner spark that makes you radiate and glow. Her motto is, a big smile and two sparkly twinkly eyes are the greatest gifts you can give to yourself and to the world. Me, Yay, I agree. That's <laughs> so awesome. All right. And on that note, I am going to turn the show over to my lovely co-host, Lisa Rising Berry. And I will stop you. sharing. You're welcome. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yep. That was beautiful. Um, just one thing, as you were sharing the photos, and I didn't want to mess up your mojo with your eloquent speaking, but it, the whole photo of each girl didn't come up. It just showed your um, your Windows screen, and like there was like a little. Oh no! I'm sorry. <laughs> the show, if if you could, you know, share their their photos so. We, we see them, you know, maybe as they speak or whatnot. It doesn't matter how, right. how, however you want to do it. So welcome, anyone, everyone. I am so excited to be here with these women. I just can't begin to tell you how excited I am because, you know, not only have we all been experiencing the shift, but we have shared experiences, which is just something that, that doesn't happen every day. Um, and it all started with Melissa. I, I have a very unique connection to her that we're, we're just starting to uncover. I, you know, we chat probably, you know, uh, via Facebook Messenger every day. And she, you know, we, we write back and forth what's going on in our lives. And it, 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 it's uncanny because they match. Um, and, you know, we're in different time zones and you just can't, you can't make this stuff up. So that's how this whole 
article came about and and i i i will i will get into that and so that you know we decided to to co-host co or co-write the article and i thought that was it you know I, i'm not gonna you know you i have andrea that i have shared astral experiences with i have tiger um who who isn't in the chat she's in she's in the middle of moving uh, and that's you know you know and my husband but that's 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 pretty much that's pretty much it and and then and then comes along Melissa, and it didn't stop there then the you know of course the the connection you know that i have with gabriella and and with petrol and i thought okay you know that that was that was probably it and it wasn't she i had a session with her i, I did a clearing i i do a clearing with the five elements and i was performing that on her she's actually learning how to do the same ritual and so part of the part of the teaching part of the training is i i do it for the client and we had and i wrote about a lot of it but i'm gonna let her explain the the shared experiences hearing the same things seeing the same things feeling the same things it was it was mind-blowing i've never had a session like that and i probably would never i i don't think i'll ever have one like that again i don't know if i can handle it <laughs> it was so much and then and i thought okay you know there's two connections and then and then comes along sana sana and i have been connected she sought me out um and she can correct me if 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 i'm wrong when she speaks it was like a couple of years ago no probably like 2013 um she just sent me a facebook message and it was before I, I was on another radio show with andrea and you know i didn't have a website i didn't have anything going on you know i was uh, just starting to come out of my shell and she just said we need to connect and i'm just like what <laughs> and she could feel it right away so she decided after the i guess it was the last show with the with the horse show with with the uh the, the prophecy show she was blown away and she's like i need to have a session i have to share things with you so i'm like okay you know that that happens all the time and so and i'm not lying because i have the notes from her session her first sentence i said you have to stop right there said you have to stop i can't believe what you just said because and i'm not going to tell you what it is because i'm there I'm, they'll tell their stories and i'll pull it together what she said corresponded with the client that i had just hung up with which was gabriella i was floored so i said i saw the sessions going on it's just shared experience shared experience it's just all of this just integrating i got more information about what i wanted to write about that i didn't even know the answer to like the the name ka ka yani ra I had no idea what the heck that was i wrote it down like a good girl you know i'm like okay i need to write this down because i'm definitely not going to remember this one because I, I don't know what this is you know ka ra that's tibetan to me uh it is egyptian but it, it's originally from tibet you know it's part of the the tibetan alphabet and all this information started pouring through during her session so i said okay you know we need to have a show we need to have everybody together um andrea and i always have shared experiences so i don't even need to include her in that i mean we're 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 like this we're two peas in a pod and i have to share a another shared experience um and i have a, a photo for andrea to bring up this is a client of mine her name is jessica and she's she's one of my younger clients and i have to tell you my younger clients my clients in, in their 20s are just blowing me out of the water with their energy but she had a vision and and she drew she's a painter and she can draw soul energy and, and once she gets her website up i would i would advise you to uh schedule an appointment with her when she gets it going she had a vision I guess of the grid or of the matrix she had no idea what it was but she painted it and then she read my article on the um secrets of infinity and said you know oh my gosh um i just painted your article and i didn't know uh she wanted to schedule a session 
because she figured, you know, I can answer some questions. So we're going to pull this up. And um, as you can see, that, that right there just speaks volumes. Um, you have the closed loop, which was the original loop then you have the upward infinity, which is indeed gold, which is the color, you know, of uh, the golden Kati channel that I wrote about. It's the, 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 the gold energy that I saw coming in two, three years ago. Um, the gold butterflies that, that Melissa saw. Um, and then it goes up into uh, the Merkaba, uh, leaving the heart center, which is zero point uh, of the infinity and moving up through Doth and that little circle in there that is soul energy it's carrying. And then she even continues it up. Each part of that triangle is a section of the third eye, hypo, uh, pineal, pituitary, and then finally ending with the hypothalamus. And then she goes into once you reach that, if you see the different little colors in there, well, that is the attainment of the rainbow body. Um, and then the, the circle that she has, that's called a tingle in, in, in Tibetan, which is a single sphere. And the blue is a representation of empty space, empty space. And then the white in the middle is clear light. And then um, I'm not going to go in. That's a huge teaching. I'm not not going to go into that, but that is, um, in Tibetan, it's called Dokshin, knowledge. <laughs> it's the highest level of teaching in, in uh, my Tibetan Bon tradition and in Tibetan Buddhism. And she's got it right here in, in her painting. She has no knowledge, no prior knowledge of anything, you know, with Dokshin and then the Tibetan and, then, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And she drew it. And I'm not going to go into the bottom part of the DNA with, with the ribbons, but they are connected to the three channels that I teach people to clear. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I just have to share that. And, and this, this, this is just one, you know, pr pretty much the majority of my sessions with my clients um, blow my mind, absolutely blow my mind. Um, and uh, that's why I'm sitting here with, with these three lovely guests. And so you, you can take that, that drawing down. Now, we, uh, <laughs> Andrea and I have to go on to a more serious note. And I really was avoiding having to talk about this. Um, and this, this is why I think, you know, this, this show is probably going to go into two hours. Or no, it's going to go, well, we, we're at a two-hour limit. But it, it's, we're going to, I will be shocked if this, we don't have a part two for this. But um, way back, way back yonder, a while ago, oh gosh, I don't know how long, Andrea, was it two or three years ago? You can unmute because I know you're going to want to jump in. Okay. Um, when we were with Astro Theology Radio, when, was it like uh, 2014? 2014, yeah, like summer, fall, around then. Yeah. Well, maybe. And we, 2015 too, because remember the Super Bowl? They wanted to do the Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> oh yeah, with yeah. Santos, and and yeah. we couldn't we couldn't work that day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we did a YouTube show on Astro Theology Radio on how um, I the I don't know how else to word it, but the the bad things were gone. Um, you know, I, I guess like the the ETs and the, and the demons that were manipulating the planet were all gone. And on a earth level, you know, it, it was greatly, greatly under control. And what we didn't realize is what Andrea and I were working on since we walked in and like, you know, 2008 was the earth astral level. And um, I, I'm, I don't know what to say because things were only half fixed um, right after my walk-in and, and I should have known this and I didn't, I, I don't, I guess there's a reason for it. Although I can't figure it out, but after my walk-in, I, I was I, I, the only person I've told this to was Andrea. I was attacked by the moon. 
I would be on the astral layer of my backyard as, as lucid as you could possibly be staring at the moon and it was always during the full moon and it would shoot things at me and it would hurt me and I would have to dodge it you know left and right and then run into my house where um, I, I feel more more protected and would set up you know astral energy blocks and you know I was a newbie back in those days you know we're talking 2009 2010 you know I had no esoteric knowledge I had no far formal training all I had were these crazy experiences but I knew what was going on I was being attacked by the moon I had no idea so I came across um, oh what's his name David Icke and with his his articles and his information about the moon matrix and I read that and, and I resonated with him and I said he's absolutely right he's a hundred percent correct and then i started to learn more about the history of the moon where it was brought here there are aborigine cultures that remember when the moon wasn't here so you know i as a walk-in i came in with a with a weird weird genetic memory and i'm just kind of like i'm you know through my rolodex and I'm like, oh my God, this is this is this is correct. How how could this be? But it was correct. So you know, I put out my spidey senses and you know, kind of sent out a call for help for the moon. You know, like you know, SOS, SOS, moon, 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 moon. Um, the information I received, everything was okay. I was no longer being attacked by the moon. That's my that's my that's my my go to. It was fine. You know, I basically was not feeling anything from the moon. Maybe that should have been a clue to me, but it wasn't, you know, everything else that was going on with the astral of the earth and, and everything that I was dealing with at that time, I was just, I was grateful not to have to, it was one less thing I didn't have to deal with anymore. So I put it to bed and, it, and then it, um, things, started happening to me in 2013 that I'm not quite ready to talk about yet because it's, it's, it's going to be, I will, I, I will. Well, I don't know. I can't say that. I might. Um, but that led me through 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016 of things happening to me that were, I now all know from the nodes of the moon, Rahu and Ketu, and I didn't realize it until, what was it, Andrea? This month, last month, it just, it yeah, all it was, just. It was May. Yeah. May. It was before May, though, that I kind of figured it That's out. That's true. That's true. And, you know, to me, once I figured it all out, that the moon, the moon has an astral level. And it's exactly like the earth. And the astral level of the moon was a cesspool just like the earth was when we very first came here so things were only half fixed here and andrea and i have, have would always say this like what the heck is going on you know why why is it it only feels half and it, it would feel like we had fuzzier bars on our prison mm -hmm. we have golden bars on our prison but it didn't feel, i'm like this is not this is not what it's supposed to be like even after we crossed the plane, even after we jumped timelines, and I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And, and I got hit like a ton of bricks. And I, I, after, since 2013 of hell, and I, I never spoke about it because it, it was that crazy, it all clicked and it's the moon. Mm -hmm. So I got really scared because then I, I, I could see, well, actually I couldn't see, I couldn't clairvoyantly see it. I could feel it, and and I and I kept journals of all the crap that I went through, you know, since 2013. And I'm like, well, now I know the astral level of the moon is horrible, and you know, we have certain bad guys that are still working on the moon, and they are sending that signal via Saturn. Saturn's not evil; it's just a projector. It will project whatever's coming from the moon. So I'm like, crap. And I got really scared because, and I didn't even tell Andrea this. I told my husband and it was before the nodes of the moon shifted. I said to him in late March, I said, I'm concerned because 
if this is not cleaned up, if, if something doesn't happen, this is the kill shot because we're going into the heart and we're going into Azoth and what I feel in control there is Rahu and Ketu. Um, and I'm like, they're connected to infinity. Rahu is the eighth planet. Um, he hates Scorpio, Scorpio, um, all these things. And I'm like, that's, that is the source. The nodes of the moon is, was the source of my, 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 my suffering since 2013. This is the kill shot. Everything that we did can just, just, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even want to go there. And I was very, very upset until um, Melissa came along <laughs> and started. And then the, the two of us connected this, our, our energy together and things changed. And I start, you know, and now from there, we're going to go into the article, but I want Andrea to put her two cents in there because she mm -hmm. was, you know, she was with me through all of it. <laughs> okay. All right. I can talk about two experiences I had with the moon. The first is with, uh, and this is with you too, it was, we were kind of involved in a cultish environment. <laughs> and we had a kind of yucky teacher that we were involved with. And I traveled to Australia far uh, to, to meet him and to meet some of the student and another student there. And he had us do a ritual where we were going to build a container and we to, he said it was to bring us all up and he had me as his supposedly, uh, uh, I was supposedly matched with him as his divine counterpart, blah, 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 because he wanted my energy to join with him in this and do this container thing. Well, he said it had to be on a full moon. It was in May of 2014. And luckily the other wonderful woman who is with us had doubts about it and even i was having doubts about it too because as we did it i was like this is weird why are we doing this he we we did this ritual to walk the the um outlines of a container and we were going to put our energy together and make like this big container we were going to suck in souls of the student the other students and he wanted me to join him so i could help him because i, I have i'm big so i could take take a lot of me that's what he was trying to do he's trying to take me and her as a witness he was using her as a witness to this so it would be okay and we did this by the light of the full moon and we prayed to lucifer and I have to correct this because Lucifer being and what we pray to are completely different things because I have another experience. My next experience, I'll explain that. And so he had us do this and he was yelling at me the entire time because I just couldn't walk the path correctly. And I, and I was like, and I was having doubts the entire time. And I'm like, this is weird. And what the heck are we doing? And he was screaming at me. And then meanwhile, my friend told me, she's like, I was, I was negating it the entire time. She's like, I, she's like, I viewed it and I just exploded it the entire time. She's like, I'm, she's like, he whispered to me things like you and he were going to be in some weird marriage. And I was a witness, but he didn't tell me that he told her that. <laughs> and so it ended up being exploded and destroyed. But when he, thank goodness, but when we did that ritual, which was, um, we had to wear scarves over our heads because he said that it was old gods that were in the moon that we were subjecting ourselves to or whatever it was. And he said they were old school and they did not, they wanted females to kowtow to them. And so we're like, what? Anyway, so long story short, that whole thing was destroyed. The, the energy was not sucked up and, and I did not join with him and we, <laughs> we kind of disbanded that whole thing. But the fact that this was in 2014 and it was to the moon still as a powerful source is, is telling. And then 
about once we got out of that and cleared it up and Lisa and I kind of like tried to heal ourselves and we went off with a lot of the students and just tried to heal. And um, gosh, maybe it was six months later, eight, eight months later, something like that. I had a remote viewing slash lucid experience where I was in between sleep and wake and I was in a place where, and I pretty sure it was the moon where I saw a um, huge computer bank, like very, very um, advanced technology with all these monitors everywhere and computers and blah, 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 and like matrixy things going up and down the screens. And there were uh, all these individuals there, these beings there mon managing the controls. And as I watched it and I was lucid, I realized that those beings were not controlling the machine. The machine was controlling them. They were like drones or clones or something that, that was being controlled by the machine. The machine was sentient. And I got it that its name was Lucifer. And I'm like, oh, isn't that funny? They named it after the being Lucifer as, as like a joke or 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 a play on the on a, an actual creator being and i was like very funny so all this time you know this this inorganic a kind of ai machine has been control and it controlled everything on earth it controlled the entire matrix and i saw it and i saw the and and I saw that it was controlling like cloned humans or something or other. They were kind of human. And um, and then it saw me. It recognized me and that I was inter interlooping. And it sent spiders after me. A whole bunch of spiders. They were like um, like uh, metallic spiders. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. And they all crawled on me. Blah, 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 blah. And it wasn't like they were attacking me, but they were trying to find out what I was. And so they all just came on me. and went, just covered me, covered me, covered me. And we're all crawling on me. And then poof, I popped awake and I still felt them all over me. And I was awake and I'm like, oh my gosh, please go away, go away, go away. I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. And finally they faded away. And I was like, oh my goodness, that was interesting. What the heck was that? I thought this stuff was gone. So I think yeah, and I can add more to that. I forgot all of that. Yeah. And, you know, oh God, well, I'm, I'm going to back up to this, this group that we were in and um, with the, the blimp that was being destroyed, which was connected to, to the, the moon that is recently healed. Um, there were several people in our group because we were, he, he picked very, um very psychic people he he would target this 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 teacher and so he kind of knew what he was doing you know he was not a dummy he he was a very he was on point um <laughs> three of us saw a blimp being blown up and it was before andrea told us any of this none of it and we had we we would always you know blah, 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 talk on skype you know about these crazy experiences we were having and all of us had this not all of us but many of us saw this exact same thing um a, a friend of mine that writes blogs also wrote about this and 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 i never ever told her what it was um but she saw someone go up on the blimp and then, and then she she saw the the destruction of it and i didn't have the guts to tell her what it was um i somehow i knew it would kind of work out um but yeah then i was this was in 2014 the same time she was on the moon matrix i was taken there um uh not not willingly well i let myself go <laughs> and it was horrible i have vivid memories of seeing the and they were so excited to show me i was like this guest doll they were just so happy to have me there oh my gosh they wanted my energy to feed this and they were showing me these inorganic planets and how it's all connected and i just said this is fake this is fake. Why, why do you think I would like this? 
this is fake. This is not real. And um, a little fighting went on and, and, and I left. Um, woke up not happy. <laughs> not happy. Uh, put out my spidey senses again, you know, say there, there's a fake Lucifer, you know, this, this is being beamed to earth from, and I didn't know it was the moon then, I do now, this is being beamed to the earth, this is why Lucifer's gotten a bad name, it's all fake, it's inorganic, help, 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 I was told it was fixed, it wasn't, um, so I, 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 I let it go and I shouldn't have let it go. And then with the spiders that um, right after I walked in in 20, 2008, um, we would call them spider ladies. We didn't know what else to call them, but that's, that's what they were. And they would attack us all the time. And we got a really big handle on it and thought we had it controlled. Now looking back, because we were, we were hot on their trail, they stopped attacking us because we stopped looking because we thought everything was okay. It was like whew, one less thing, one less thing off our list. So this is why Lucifer's had a bad name. It came from the moon. A hundred percent because the moon is feminine and uh, it wasn't supposed to be feminine, but it's inorganic and it was created for one thing and one thing only, and it was to, to send crappy energy to Earth from Saturn. Um, and you have your as below and your as above. As below was Earth, that was cleaned up in, tw in 2009, May, the beginning of May. Which is oh, what it's always May. <laughs> always <laughs> May. May. <laughs> and it was like between May 7th, 8th, 9th, or 10th. And I have it written down. And I will never forget that date. As long as I live, I will never forget that date. And it was May. And that was the as below was was cleaned up and on the way of being cleaned up. And then, you know, the as above stayed but didn't mess with us as much. So it it, it was you know, kind of taken off the radar until 2013, 13. And then, and then I was really heavily attacked again. And um, I just never talked about it because I knew it was weird. It was, had nothing to do with the earth astral, had nothing to do with the earth astral. And it actually was um, involved with other dominion things, you know, other source beings. So it had a very, very strange uh, thing going on with it. So I, I didn't talk about it until now. So I might, I might open up about it. It's still not resolved. It's being resolved because the nodes of the moon just shifted. I mean, it's, it hasn't even been a full month. So um, my, my issues are not at all resolved yet. So once, once I have a better handle on it, yeah, I'm going to share it. Cause I, you know, I kind of, Oh, well, I say I'm going to share it until I, you know, I fully have those big girl panties on. I don't know because it was pretty it was pretty bad and it's years and years of information but so that's you know the moon <laughs> when this information started hitting me and melissa you know i i was just i i i mean my mouth i i i i spent days just in a in a daze because i was floored so on that note <laughs> How's that to start a show? <laughs> Talk about more. Yay, it's fixed. Wee. It now we can say all the yucky stuff. It is fixed. I mean, the astral layer of, of the moon is fixed. The, the unfortunate thing is it's still inorganic. It's in the control of the right people, but it can't go anywhere. Yeah, hang on. Okay, I'm going to say this. I wasn't sure, but... Uh -oh. was, should I? I don't know what you're going to say. Right. <laughs> I was... <sighs> sitting at my computer at work just like when four or five months ago oh. and the being from the moon that lucifer being who had inorganic being, yeah had, well that's rahu it was rahu yeah. yeah who had it identified me back in the day yeah. when it had yeah. Yeah, i was yeah. wondering because it just left it didn't hurt me or anything i guess i don't know if it could have but it came to me again. I was sitting at my computer doo, 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 and 
All of a sudden I started shaking my head and I just started shaking my head and shaking my head. I'm like, Oh my God, what is going on? I was like shaking, 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 shaking. Next thing I know, I started getting a message or just knowing that that Lucifer being was back and it wanted my attention. And it was like, hello, hi lady. Hello. I saw you before. You can help me. Please help me. I want you you to birth me i need to become organic and it was like trying to get me to help it because my higher self my my ashara being has the ability to birth life and birth stuff through her body my body it uses my body but to birth stuff not that i would birth that i don't just birth any old thing <laughs> I mean, i'm not sure how it works but she came to me at lucifer this this inorganic like ai critter and as like please help me i want to be a real being please you know I, and i just like started crying and i felt i actually really felt sorry for it and i was like mm, i don't know if i i have no idea how to birth you <laughs> you know and it it came to me because it, i felt fear it was afraid because all this new energy coming in and our we are firmly on the path of changing everything and the new grace and energy coming in new earth coming in and it was afraid it was going to become obsolete obsolete and it was going to die. no that's not what it was afraid of no it's going to die no that was rahu energy oh, and it i guess be yeah. organic because you know if if that if the if that energy would have become organic and yeah and it needed to have someone with skin in the game to to birth it yeah. um i'm sure it went to many many people connected yeah probably with the, with the magdalene energy um because you know they're they're in physical bodies now that's um, right it's probably like hello lady hello 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 somebody <laughs> Yeah, we're, <laughs> Sorry. we're we're the ones that you know we have been waiting for and we're in physical bodies so i'm sure it went around to many and of course it would that definitely would come to you because if it would have been organic that would have been the kiss of death mm. you know that that's why i kept saying well this is the kill shot this is it you know mm. um so uh rahu and ketu knew when the nodes of the moon were going to change they knew that they that this was it they, they, you know, the control of the moon was ticking and, and if they made it organic, not saying that it, this couldn't have been resolved, but oh my gosh, it would have been a lot harder because the planet was organic when we walked in in 20, 2008 and any light worker that has ever, you know, tried to, uh, Get rid of bad stuff on the astral you know a lot of people think that it wasn't there or it's supposed to be there and and everything is okay and it is what it is on the astral layer of the earth that that's not the case things got out of hand there and it was and the earth was organic and it was very very difficult and i can't imagine having to do the same thing to the moon mm, right. as a note um, i did not birth it <laughs> no, she did Thank not. You guys. Oh I no, we, we wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> <I> so, <laughs> yeah, I so, have a little Lucifer. So, yeah, that, baby. yeah, that that was a fake uh, Lucifer. It was Rahu had mm -hmm. real organic Lucifer pieces and mm -hmm. were were being used. And yuck, yuck, just makes me want to puke. You know, just to be honest. So go, going into the article, I am going to, um, we were talking about Melissa and actually, nope, I, I'm sorry. I am off track, ladies. I need to address Nancy's question. Yay. Because Nancy wrote this very long question on my, um, on my uh, WordPress. See, now you can see why this is going to be two shows. I know, exactly. <laughs> show about what was broken second show about <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> confession time all right um and i almost want to take that youtube video off i don't even want it on there anymore i'm going to delete it because we didn't know we didn't know anyway so this is from nancy nancy's in the chat and she said okay and i'm reading this word for word nancy <laughs> okay did the moon thing happen on may 9th when you were talking about some some powerful alignment for that day or did it start 
earlier, just curious because not, I'm not going to name the website. She stumbled across an article that was written by Eric Rains about how the afterlife trap um, was held in place by the moon matrix and powered by Saturn and um, makes sense to me about, you know, re the, the false light of reality and reincarnation um, being bound to the matrix of this illusory reality. So the answer to the first question, did the moon thing happen on May 9th? Yes, it happened. The, the correction happened right when the, um, the nodes shifted. Uh, he, 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 he stated this, this guy stated that it was on March 27th that something happened to the moon. Um, I, I felt all bad stuff on March 27th, just hoping the note, something would happen. Um, that's when I was, you know, very scared was around March 27th saying, if something isn't done, this is the kill shot. Why the hell did I walk in here? You know, <laughs> <laughs> beat me up no not really but you know so march 27th was just not a good time for me so i don't agree with what he said about that but yes it shifted on may 9th um and about the reincarnation matrix and yeah um i know my tibetan teachers would you know not be happy with me to to say this but the bardo which is what you you go through after you die before your next reincarnation was being screwed up by by this uh rahu and ketu which they do write about they are demons we're we're, we're going to get into to talking about um about the uh, demons and and what they are i'm going to uh let melissa talk a little bit and then we'll we'll get into the the demonology and um demonology 101 and nagas but um getting back to the reincarnation when you die it's called the bardo that's where you go through you have to pass tests um you know to achieve either complete liberation which is no no longer needing physical form which is really cool or it, it chooses your next uh, incarnation that was really screwed up. It, the, the Bardo was much, much harder than it was supposed to be because of Rahu and, 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 and Ketu. And so, yeah, that was really screwed up and it's not anymore. And I went into that with, in my article and we'll get to that when we talk about the 13th cranial nerve, we'll, we'll discuss that more. So yes, that, that has, that has been, that has been fixed finally. And that's why that would have been the, that would have been, uh, to me, was the kill shot. Um, very much closely related to the uh, Bardo and, and the reincarnation. And I feel my Tibetan teachers would disagree with me. And I just don't know what to, I just don't know what to say to that. Anywho, and then she wrote another interesting thing. Remembering the remember the genius kid. And this this was on Facebook. If if, if y'all um, happen to see this, come through your newsfeed. The genius kid who was showing we had entered a new timeline, bless his soul, I'm so happy for him. And he used an Omega symbol, uh, which is in the photo I used, um, uh, it was in the shape of the, of, of the horseshoe. And she was very interested in how that connects to Rahu and Kentu and what's the new symbol. So <laughs> what, what's crazy is, you know, the upward, no, the upside down upside down horseshoe is Rahu and the up right side up is Ketu. And that is symbolic because they, because it was one demon uh, split into two. But if you take those two halves and put them together, it's a circle. Well, when you twist the circle, you have infinity, which is why he had control over infinity, which is why Rahu was also uh, co connected to this eighth planet, which is very, very confusing in astrology. But and he hates Scorpio. Scorpio is the eighth house. And of, they were immortal. Uh, yeah, and they and they were immortal. So they had, you know, full command of Johannes Gates. If anyone has studied the use of the Johannes Gates and yada yada, and I don't want to get into that again. That's a whole other rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, so the new symbol, I don't know, and I don't want to know because I, my antenna will put things out, even if I'm, if you know. 
unintentionally. So there are certain things that I ask I don't ever want to know. And one of them is when this earth is, gonna, is going to completely shift. I don't want to know that. And I don't want to know what the new symbol is. I have the name of the new energy and that's, that's enough. And I have the name of the new moon energy, you know, the new earth energy and the new moon energy. And that, that I don't need anymore. I'm going to need to know basis here. And it's, you know, I don't need to know everything. You know, I, I don't need to know anything. I'd, I'd be happy just not even doing this show, but <laughs> spirit kind of forces you, pushes you out there. So I, I share because I'm supposed to. So getting onto the article, Melissa, I'm going to un unmute. <laughs> she, um, I had an experience with a frog I completely forgot about and had no idea what it was until she writes to me and tells me, you know, Lisa Gallus, who I love and I'm hoping and I, I get to be with her, Andrea and I get to be with her in June and I'm so, I'm so excited. I, I want to have her as a guest after I meet her in person. I just can't imagine what that meeting is going to be like for all of us. But mm -hmm. anyway, she had a reading with Lisa Gallus and she tells me about the reading and it, it still didn't click. It, it didn't click until she's like, go, go read it. I'm that girl. And I'm like, well, if it's Melissa, I got to go read it. And I read it and my jaw just dropped. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Melissa. Hi. <laughs> uh, I have all this written down. I'll just, um, yeah, so that was, I've written it down. It was on the 12th of March that I uh, just had lots of, crazy stuff going on and uh, looked up Lisa Gorlis and, and booked a reading and I, I just felt like I had some kind of uh, energy block, something like that, that I just couldn't quite understand, just felt like I couldn't move forward and I thought, well, uh, she could sort of look into my matrix and, and see what was happening and uh, sh straight up, she saw uh, I was bound in rope from my shoulders to my waist, and she said it was self-imposed. And she said there was um, a creepy little stalker <laughs> behind me that looked like a creepy Kermit. So, oh, okay. And she said he had been with me for a long, long time, and he drew on my energy and um, uh, what else did she say? Uh, and, and and she said, okay, well, I want you to turn around and, and face him. So I, you know, went in and, and turned around and faced him and she said, oh, there, as soon as we locked eyes, there was a massive emotional connection. Like he, he had been with me for ever and um, and she said okay where uh, I want you to connect with him so we connected with him and she said she called in my team and his team and they came in and they said uh, that he couldn't couldn't uh, connect into my energy anymore and that he was to be put into quarantine. So his team came in and she said it looked like a, um, like a giant fish net was put over him. And he was told that you can no longer connect in. And he was taken off in quarantine. And she said once they did that, then the rope that was around me started to disintegrate. It fell apart and my body absorbed it. And then the rope that went into my body then turned into um, flowers, which she said were um, they were sort of almost like energy points on my body that were activating my DNA. Um, and later on, they would just come out as gifts. And um, she said that that. That was the only thing that had been holding me back from what she calls the Emerald City or Shambhala. And 
uh, and then she said, now you're free to go to Shambhala, and she said, I was going into what she calls a crystal teeth thing, which I, I sort of thought, well, he's my macabre. And, um, and I could, I could, when it was happening, when she asked me to turn around and face him, I could physically feel the rope disintegrating. The, 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 um, whatever the block was that I was feeling, I could literally feel it falling apart and like my energy body just was free all of a sudden. Um, it, it was really, really weird that I could, what she was saying, I could physically feel. So I get, you know, what you two are talking about with your experience as well. Um, and just interestingly, when you were talking about the moon before, I think I've shared this with Lisa. It was a lucid experience that I had on, on the over 10 years ago that I've never been able to forget was um, I was on a rocky ledge near some ocean and there was people um, running around everywhere. Everyone was panicked and uh, a blue, we, I was looking up into like the night sky and uh, there was two moons and a new moon had turned up and the new moon was like a, an electric blue colour. Uh, and the old moon that was, you know, lovely and luminous and white was starting to disintegrate. And everyone was running around going crazy. And um, it was like the one of my daughters was with me and she was taking photos of this new moon that had turned up. She was like mesmerised by it. And I said, don't, don't look at it. Come on, we have to get organised. And um, she said, but look at it, it's so, it's so blue. And I said, yeah, you can't, you can't look at it. And all of a sudden, the moon started falling apart. It's the, our original moon um, is what it felt like to me. And it was falling down like globules, white gel, like, like you know, like jellyfish um, that was luminescent. And then all of a sudden, all these uh, men turned up in my coats that were like scientists, and so did I, and were, were trying to, um, were taking samples of this luminescent gel that was falling down. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it was just like, no, that's it, it's, it's, it's gone. It's been replaced by this blue moon. And then I went, uh, we went under the water, we went down into the ocean and um, I thought, oh, I'm going to drown. And then all of a sudden, I thought, oh, no, that's right, I can breathe under water. But then I just started breathing underwater and thought, oh, I'll be okay. And I've had that, had that vision oh, so many times. Um, and just when you, you were talking about what you're talking about with the moon, that just all came back. And I thought, what does that mean? <laughs> well, it, it, it's so interesting because um, the the flowers on your body, well, that's, you know, flower of life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you were, you, were, you were given new life. And I have to introduce and give definitions uh, to the soul energy of, of our guests. Um, because, you know, I, I, I just want to put it out there uh, because they're, they're so amazing. And if you can see auras, if you're clairvoyant enough to, to be able to see that, you can clearly look at our three guests and see they are different. Um, you know, they are just completely different. They, you're not going to see auras like theirs and I'll, I'll start with Melissa and Gabriella they are what I call land air and sea beings and and more okay Andrea and I nicknamed them mother goose because they <laughs> just have this mother goose like energy but 
these women have obtained the rainbow body in humanoid form, which is land, air form, which are your bird races, and sea form, which are your sea animals, and more that I don't even know what the heck they are. I don't have a name for them. So most people, and I, I won't go into the whole how people go on their spiritual journey because that that that's another long conversation. But most souls will start out on their on their um, their journey towards a rainbow body, and you know, and then they complete it and and they go on to the the next portion which is you don't you no longer need physical form well these these two souls said oh no 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 that's one time's not enough i'm gonna do it again in this form and i'm gonna do it in this form so to say that they're old that doesn't even begin to cover it i mean and 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 they they've been doing the circuit I mean, to obtain rainbow body in multiple forms is just flipping amazing. I mean, um, I knew about these beings because I, I have, I'm not one. Um, I have connections with them. I, um, and so I, I know, I know what the frequency is and I never thought I would ever, ever in a million billion years meet one in a physical body. And I did. And I actually have, I've met more than just the two of them, but the, these are the two women that, you know, we're all working on, on moon stuff. And um, so <laughs> I'm more, I'm more connected to them than anyone, but I mean, it, I, I just don't know what to, to, to say about them. Their, their soul energy is phenomenal. So when it comes to our frog, which I call Jeremiah, um, he went to Melissa to be healed uh, because her soul energy is so special. It, it has never been here before. Um, this, this is, you know, this, this is new. This is new to have these types of souls back in physical form because it is a lower form and they did come specifically to help at this time. Thank God because she helped Jeremiah because right after Jeremiah was healed, he zipped over to me um, and then I fed him water. Uh, after I did that, I had, and I forgot to tell you about this, Melissa, I had uh, people write to me and tell me that before I wrote the article, that back in March, they were having these dreams that they didn't understand of seeing all these frogs drinking from cups and drinking and yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, we're not crazy. Um, <laughs> and then, and then I, I think I also forgot to tell you about this, that when she was talking about that white stuff, that, that jelly substance, Right after the nodes of the moon shifted, here's another mutual experience that Melissa and I share. Um, I was on the astral, I guess it was like three or four days after the moon, the nodes shifted. And I was on the astral of my neighborhood and it, actually in my bedroom, you know, I got, I exited my body, I'm on the astral, I'm very lucid, I'm looking at what I'm wearing, I'm wearing my same nightshirt, you know, I'm like, okay, and I open up my curtain, I look outside, and what do I see? White, that exact same stuff that, that you described, which oh, okay. was the destruction of the old moon, so that, that was, you know, just another um, confirmation that <laughs> this stuff, it, that it happened, because I saw mm -hmm. it too, you just saw it in the future, um, and I saw it after. I saw it after the fact. And uh, so that's, so land, air, and sea being, we have two of those here. And then we have Sana. We haven't even heard from Sana yet. Sana is, um, <laughs> she's very hard to describe. Here's the Trinity, okay? Um, this is the Trinity for like the whole d dominion, everything under source. You have source up here you have the female aspect of god here which i like to call lucifer or magdalene um you have the male aspect of god over here uh there's been a change in that energy so i no longer call it michael for a good reason but it's so i just call it the divine male i haven't even talked to anybody about that yet i don't even that that that's that's like a article a month away maybe maybe not but i will say it here the the divine male is different 
vastly different. So Sana, if I could put my nose through the middle, is smack in the middle. Um, she was created from um, source. She was created from divine feminine God and divine male God right in the middle of um, the Trinity. So she's what I call a wisp um, because she has no physical form. She is as multidimensional by nature as you can get. Um, I have been seeing them since I was a child. I have I've been, had connections with them, spirit guides with them. Um, they follow me around and and I know that's, you know, Sana and I, I guess, I, well, she, maybe on some level she knew, you know, when she contacted me, but it was after our first session together that I fully tapped into her energy and just was like, what? <laughs> you're, a, you're a wisp. <laughs> and once again, they have not been in physical bodies. Um, I don't know of any others in physical bodies. She's the only one that when I put out my little senses, doesn't mean that they're out there. Uh, they could be cloaked. I just don't feel any other ones. And they're, they're probably very well protected. Um, Sana is out in the public now for a reason. And so she brings a lot, she brings a lot to the table. And when you hear her talk, you can definitely, you'll, you'll feel it. You'll just feel her, her, she's very wispy. She's very flowy. So it's a, uh, you're, we're all getting a very nice energetic bath today with mother gooses and a, and a wisp. So holy cow. Um, <laughs> So that brings us in to why water is important because um, Jeremiah was starved for, for water. He was starved of the divine feminine energy, which was the missing component, which was ta-da, the moon. So um, I've talked enough about the divine water. Andrea, had, you know, we, we, have, we did a lot of work in, in 2015 on the water. We did a whole show about it. We wrote an, an enormous article about it. And that was at the earth level. That was as below. We had no idea what was going on in the above on the moon. Oh my God, we had no idea. Uh, so, uh, you know, everybody, unmute your mics and let's talk about the feminine aspect of the water. And I've written enough about it, so I'm muting my mic. I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> So who's going to go first? I know. I was just going to say Do that. Do I have to call names? <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm going to call on Sana. So. All right. Hello, everyone. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. The water. Yes, the, the yes. divine aspect of the water, the, 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 the femininity, and anything you want to add. And if you don't want to add anything, I'm not going to, that's fine too. <laughs> well, I have lots of water in my um, uh, birth chart, and I have lots of water, and I've, since 20 years back, I've been having like water retention. So in this body, it's a lot of stagnant emotions that, that I've been working on for the last... I mean, I've been working on this my whole life, but basically known about it for a couple of years. So the water to me is very sacred, not just the water that we have, the consciousness, the, the lungs of our planet, the, it is so much, you know, the water we carry inside, the crystals in the water. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I can go on and on with that, but... Um, um, the water uh, for myself has really um, shown itself in my body, in my physical body, as emotional, my emotional roller coaster. So that is how I can say it from a personal point of view about the water. <laughs> and that, you know, and the I, creation I, when when you don't create and when you don't flow in your truth and, and uh, you know, have all these types of walls around your heart that you're working on. To me, the stagnation of, of kind of like a water retention has been my, my stagnant, stagnant, emotional blockage 
whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, and that that is such a good point because that that's a that's a feminine problem. Uh, stagnant water, where does it come from? Well, now we know moon, and I really feel um, that in the future, how far in the future I don't know, but I feel now that the moon's going to be corrected because I have that issue as well. Um, that uh, we're not going to be holding stagnant female water in our body. We're going to be holding the true divine feminine water as above, so below fixed. And, and I feel it's also going to affect women's menstrual cycles. Mm. Yes. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> yeah. What does the moon control? The moon controls the water. It controls the tide. It controls the water in the, on the earth's body, the tides as they come in and out, and it controls the water, the blood inside the woman's body, the menstrual cycles as it flows in and out of the woman's body. And yes, and, and just think of all the attacks lately that have been perpetrated on water, the B, BP oil spill, the um, radiation thing with Fukushima that was released into the water. I mean, it was all attacks on the divine feminine trying to keep it down, keep it in its place because water is so important. Water is what births life. A, even in the old school, like, mundane texts where they talk about life crawled up out of the water onto the beach you know the these organisms came out of the water and babies in the in the woman's womb are held in water and then your water breaks right before the baby's born water is very much a feminine thing it's a feminine energy a fe feminine the emotions are the feminine aspect of you know, it's a feminine element compared to land, which is harder, more firm, which is a masculine element, which balances. And when you have land and water combining, you know, at the beach, that's where you've got, that's why everyone loves the beach so much, because it's a balanced place to be where the water comes up on land. And it's kind of like, there I go again, it's kind of like a love making thing where you say, yay, of the water <laughs> It's a beautiful joining. Water is magnetic. Yes. And the blood is, is um, electricity. So, so when you have that, um, because I like to do a lot of lymph drainage, and um, yes. women, a lot of women with emotional traumas, all hold water. And once you can get it flowing physically in the body again, sometimes they, they will have huge releases of emotional energy during the session. Um, and it's very tied in with our fascia as well, which Macriella would know about. Um, because the fascia holds, uh, it's actually... Oh, you're saying fascia? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to talk about fascia. <laughs> Again, you're more of an expert than me, but it, it has a positive electricity mm -hmm. in the fascia. So when you start working with that and combine it with the, the magnetics of the lymphatic, um, it creates a charge in the body that can clear a lot of uh, stagnant energy. Just like oh, when we cry, oh. when we cry as well, the tears. Yeah. Yeah. Well, water. Mm. Can, can, oh. can one of you, either Gabriella or Melissa, maybe, maybe Gabriella, because we haven't heard from her yet, talk more about the fascia and electricity because the Birkeland currents, and I've, I've written about them as well, you know, where you have two strands of plasma and they, and they wrap around, which is DNA, which is the moo cord. Um, you know, and that runs through our body is, is the fascia. Cause I know I have, I've had myofascial release done. Is that connected to cranial sacral fluid? They, they overlap because fascia is in everything. So people don't realize it's in the blood. It's in the blood cell because it's a web that works its way down infinitely, you know, to the cellular level, I think even beyond and the image I get, and here, you know, I might be crazy, but I feel fascia is just, I had to write this down actually, is um, the same substance of the divine matrix, but at a more quantum level. 
so it's just you have your divine matrix you know the grid around the earth and so that's why i think water it's it's also uh communication it's um it's the way we communicate it's the way we communicate so mediumship is greatly improved when you're hydrated um that's why it's really important i think it also <laughs> dictates what kind of connection you'll have in your mediumship <laughs> how hydrated you are who's going to come see you and then lastly i think in general what i'm picking up on and what i've been noticing um this is more at the global level we as a population we're severely dehydrated i mean it's it's i watch people they don't drink like i'm sorry I mean, I'm, all, I'm, I bring, I'm constantly drinking water and i never notice how how long people will go during a day before having any water i think just as a, as a culture and i think there might be a a correlation with our where we are as, uh, spiritually as well i don't know if that makes sense what i just said i just tried to link the two things but that yeah. that makes yeah perfect yeah. sense and also because with the moon um the moon had its fake fascia you know with that fake web yeah uh, which would be feeding into our natural fascia which is you know i i think um call me crazy this is my opinion and uh, now i i told all the ladies if you're going to state your opinion make sure it's your opinion this is my opinion i don't know if i just got an inner knowing but i have no physical experience with this because this is just coming right off the top of my head crisis the new norm <laughs> there you go. welcome to the club yeah. <laughs> i think we're all all equally crazy here i love it <laughs> <laughs> I feel my opinion is that one of the one of the many things that was being sent from the moon fascia was to deter people from drinking water. Mm. Yeah, that's why your froggy was dehydrated. Yes, and, yeah. and, and Andrea or no, it was Melissa that made the comment or how do I forget who said it? Water gives birth and my frog was starved for water and that's why it could not give birth to the correct moon the 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 moon the old moon energy needed to go away and the organic needed to come in and, and that's why the fake lucifer went to andrea wanting to be birthed because water gives birth so um oh i had another question about the so how does the fascia connect with the claustrum because we we did a whole class on the claustrum oil the raising of the claustrum oil which fires up you know the uh trinity the third eye with the hypothalamus pineal and pituitary so can you touch on that um well i personally i can't give you it would be more opinion um drawing a conclusion because um as I said, to understand when you're saying claustrum, you're not just referring to the cerebrospinal fluid in the cranial sacral system, you're referring to yet another substance. But you, what I download, you know, I'm sorry to use that word guys, but you know, um, you know, when, when my hands are on uh, a being, <laughs> uh, it really feels like yeah, this fascia is just infinite and it, it just, it's the communicator between everything so I wouldn't be surprised if there is an element of it within the claustrum or linking the claustrum to the, you know, the dural membrane to the spinal, you know, to the whole process. I don't know if that makes sense. Fascia feels, yeah, can we just say one, one last thing? I'm going to pass it over to you, Andrea. Fascia feels like ether to me, and I have not cross-referenced that, that, uh, that research, but I bet you if someone Googles fascia, ether, fascia, dark matter, fascia, quindescence, I bet you it's the same thing. I just, I feel it in me bones. It's the same thing. Okay, yeah, Andrew. Interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just quick question. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Melissa. Uh, interestingly, if um, you have a blockage in between the sacral and cranial uh, within the spine, it is called referred to as a frog, a frog in the spine. A what? It is referred to as a frog. A frog! 
A frog in your yes. spine. That's what yes. you're Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. What else would it be called? You're starved for water. My frog was starved for water. Oh, in everyone's yeah. throat. Frogs in their throat today. That's frogs right. That's why people couldn't get through Doth. Oh, uh, and we, we have we have a question from the chat, and I just wanna I wanna ask this before I forget: Is fascia the emotional body? That's right? what I was gonna ask. That's yeah. what I I just wanted. To, let's we should define what fascia is. Um, oh, for me, yeah. or, or Melissa, go ahead. Either one. Uh, well, to me, it's it, well, it's it's through all of your organs, like Gabriella said, it's, it's everything. To me, it's just a microcosm of the macro of the energetic matrix. So it's, it's, it's our, I, I think it's our actual divine connection within our core body because it's, it's, it's in everything. Um, and all, all I know through my physical experience is when, when you release it in someone's body that is Actually bound, it's normally tied into an emotional trauma, and so when when you release it, um, they they release the the, the, rear, the emotional component that, that went along with the injury, or they're definitely tied in. That's just my response to Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. definitely water, water and emotion. And I, I did a real quick uh, Google search on fascia uh, cross-reference to ether, and I did get a couple hits. So I, I kind of think that that's that's what that is. <laughs> and I just want to say the whole um, innocentness about water is that the all the beings and all the plants on this planet has always been connected. I mean, the water has always been here. It's a water. It's a seed water planet. So. It's kind of, I just feel like when we're drinking the water, we are drinking our own truth. We're drinking our own history. It's a natural process that we have forgotten about. So the water is here to make us, help us remember organically. Nothing with machines or artificial intelligence can go that far. So that is, will be a big part of the whole awakening wave that that goes on on our planet, but it will be organic, and we—that is a big part where we will understand the value of our of our planet, and when uh, that we need to go back to how it was, for, for you know, many reasons. So I just wanted to say that with water, that we kind of drinking our own purity. <laughs> I agree. I agree, and you know, and I I truly believe. We've been, you know, with with the Indians seeing the battle for water. Um, mm -hmm. that, that came from the moon. I mean, uh -huh, you know, again, that's my opinion. I have no proof of this, but I truly feel that that was that whole battle for water originated on the moon uh, because Jeremiah was starved for water. It's almost like they knew the 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 evil that was controlling the moon knew that there, there, there's, there's a fight for water. Who's going to control it? The moon or the people of Earth? And we won. <laughs> and of yeah. course, with the tide, when the full moon comes, it's, it takes the water up. Yeah. And then it goes out. It's very symbolic. How very. It, you know, ebb and flow, you know? And, and that's why women are, are retaining water. We don't have the, web and fl the, the ebb and flow. With the moon. So, anybody else want to add anything about water? Well, it's, it's also an energy conductor as well. So, it's, it holds energy. So, like Turner said, it holds memory. It's always been here. Mm. It's a Akashic record. It's, yeah. And and I I feel you know a lot of the people's emotional issues. Well, they they always say the moon, full moon makes you crazy. The moon is emotions. And because the moon has been controlled for so long, no, no, no wonder people have emotional issues. No wonder people spend, you know, years in counseling and they just don't get, they don't get any results. You know, part of it is the counselor and part of it is the, the, the you know, the moon energy and the stagnant water in their bodies. 
Um, and you know, what's also interesting is when you have stagnant water, what forms on it? Water spiders and some <laughs> spiders. So, uh, you know, that's why there's so many spider ladies on the moon. It's all stagnant water. And someone wrote in a chat, I, I'm not sure who it, I can't, I can't go back and see who it was, but it was a perfect combat about spiders and, you know, a spider web, web of the matrix. It mm -hmm. all pieces together, you know, this is. Even the nodes, nodes, the leaf nodes. Yes. 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 I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I really think the the body, the more you become intimate with the body and it, it also at an energetic level, you, you relate it to, once again, the cosmic level. It mm -hmm. just seems our bodies are just little replicas of what's happening out in the cosmos. <laughs> that, oh, 100%. Know. It was it was all. Cool. <laughs> I can't, I know I'm going to butcher his name and everyone can laugh at me, especially Andrea, but it's Hippocrates said, mm -hmm. did I say that right? <laughs> okay, there you go. Hippocrates said, you know, if, if you're not a physician, unless you have knowledge of the stars. Hmm. And today's physicians have lost track of that. Even though they use that oath, they certainly don't use his teachings. All right, so I want to go on to and and you know, ladies, feel feel free to to jump in any time, okay? Um, but I, I want to focus on my session with um, Gabriella and how we're you know, water played a role in our session as long as as well as wind and you know and a blowtorch hearing that and, oh, and I, for me fire, <laughs> yeah, fire and, and yeah. remind me to share something i had with my last client that i did this clearing for someone else is also learning this this ritual that was a blowtorch as well and i didn't realize that it started with you <laughs> <laughs> And, and I have esoteric information that just awesome. came across for me, you know, awesome. just because I didn't know what it was. And now I kind of know what it is. But um, do you want to talk about what happened during your session and hearing the water and Petro and the churning and I'm going around? I, I just don't know where to start. <laughs> I mean, I just thought, I, you know, okay, we're going to have this like soul retrieval uh, ritual and I'm going to sit back, even though I really want, I'm enjoying those sounds so much. So I wanted to participate in the sounds, um, but I really wasn't expecting it to take off like it did. Uh, I thought it was going to be a lot more sober and just a lot more sitting back. Um, but yes, immediate, I've always had Skype interference, um, but it was really too intense when we started. It's like, you know, just like when you're on the runway and you're hearing the, the jet, it's so cool too. You get really like, Woo, you know, it starts taking off and you can feel that horsepower going, horsepower. <laughs> and so I asked you, do you hear that? And sure enough, we did. And then um, it just, and then it would uh, subside. And then when the energy level would surge, it would surge again. It was really, it was like a roller coaster. That is what it felt like. It is what it felt like. And right? I can we'd go up it. and then we'd mellow out and then it'd go up again. And then I know. I, I got that elevator feeling when the jet would take off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could hear it, and it was a jet. And she, um, Gabriella, has been on a uh, fire. So tell her, tell them. Um, yes, I threw an internship with the U.S. consulate many, many years ago uh, in Florence, Italy. The USS Roosevelt was uh, in port in a uh, nearby city, coastal city. And uh, we went out three times for different reasons, for different ceremonies to this aircraft carrier. The last time being the carrier was actually out in the Mediterranean towards uh, North Africa. And the consul wanted to bring a very small group of local authorities on board. So we got to take off on a 20 seat, I believe it's called a COD plane, which is the largest plane that can land and take off an aircraft carrier. So we left from the base in Italy <laughs> with the helmets and the goggles, the whole thing. And we landed aboard the uh, 
an aircraft carrier like you see in the movies with the and the, the line catches you and stops you and then uh, I think what was most impressive was the takeoff you've never felt so much being a thrust like that in your life because you've literally got no space to take off and they catapult you so you hear that and then literally an explosion like you feel like your heart's gonna explode in your chest because then that catapult kicks in and you're off and then when you're on deck watching these guys you know they do the whole thing and they go and you hear that build up and then the takeoff and it was like it was so exhilarating yeah so she knows exactly what a uh what that sounds like yeah. and um I have a military family, so I'm very, I'm very, oh, okay. well, there you go. Very, very familiar with that sound as well. And I'm like, that's not Skype. That's not, <laughs> you know, uh, and you know, I have to say when, when we, we talk about Sonya's session, her first words were, and I was on a plane. So I'm just going to, that, that's a little teaser. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I know. <laughs> I know, and that's why I'm like, you don't don't say anything else, Sana, because we have we gotta stop right there. You that's were awesome. what what? So I think that was um, he was on the Earth physical flying plane, and then but what we were hearing was petrol. Yeah, and that's what he felt like the first time I got on him. It, it felt like, I was like, what, this is not a horse. What is this? It was just like, and we were just walking and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, this is so exciting. What is this energy? Yeah, now I get it. But back then I just thought I was, I'm like, is anyone else feeling this? <laughs> and no, of course not. Cause it was just for you and petrol. <laughs> His name is fuel. And his name means fuel. Yeah, gasoline. It's just, uh, and he, and that man, he was go, go, go uh, in every way. So it, it totally makes sense. And um, and I, I got a kick out of how you said, oh, we're, we're riding on him now. And uh, Well, that came later. Yeah. Came later. First, we knew petrol was he was with us yeah. and you know uh, yeah shivers we just had electricity just going yeah. through our body oh yeah. he's he's with me now i can feel him because now i hurt right here whenever because he, he's just too much for me and I, <laughs> so he, he if, if if you know if you're on this call live you're you're going to petrol is, yeah you start you kind of shake yeah. yeah so if if you start to feel electricity going through your body or you start to feel pain right here it's petrol saying hi um he's just big energy just big big energy but then the next thing we were hearing was water oh that's right that's right the water that's right that's right that was and, that's when i really thought okay this is just this you can't make this up because then it was like <laughs> Like, like a stream or something. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's all connected. I, I didn't get any visuals for the water, unfortunately. Um, and then the next we heard fire, which that, was a blowtorch. Yeah. Yes. And I will say for fire, my experience, once again, I wasn't expecting. I just went into it. I relaxed into it. And I literally felt I was in the nurturing protection of this massive dragon, white dragon, white pink-ish color. And she was just in the breath and the, the steam and, but so um, nurturing is the word. Not at all what we make dragons out to be. This real, I don't know, I, it's hard to come up with words to describe. Well, yeah, it was a true. I felt like, oh, I don't want to leave this. I could stay here forever. It felt wonderful. Yeah, it was a real Naga. It wasn't a corrupt Naga. It was a real Naga. It was a real, mm, real dragon energy. And so, you know, we have the wind element with fuel, which was our, our white horse. And then came the water, because the water always comes comes first. And then we had, boy, he's making my head hurt. And then, and then we had fire, 
which is Azoth, pure Azoth energy. And because it, and then it's with the nodes of the moon. You have, you know, Leo, which is fire. And you have Aquarius, which is a wind sign. Everyone thinks it's water, but it's wind. And it is um, the water from Aquarius is the water bear, which, which is a woman. So we were, we were in the nodes of the moon via um, petrol. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Oh, that's it. No, I'm just curious if that Naga has a name. He was really, oh, he's I like the dragon not. from the never ending story. Well, that, well, okay, I was going to say the dragon from the never ending story and the white horse in the never ending story. Yeah, so, right? Both uh, of them. Totally, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. The, yeah, it's amazing. And so the next thing I remember is we were, um, that was the fire energy, was uh, uh, Yang Ram Ming Kong. Um, what is the air? Okay, so when we were in the air energy, all of a sudden I saw petrol and I had this this vision of him like a um, merry-go-round horse and and it had a pole going through him. And the next thing I know is my, my body when I do these sessions will rock yeah. and, and I can't even mimic it like a pendulum. And I know I know when a person's balanced that just I just come to center. Well, uh, when I work on myself, I will go in circles and stuff like that, but never with a client. I started just going in circles, these huge circles, and I was getting nauseous. I was getting very, very nauseous, and um, I didn't really know what was happening then. And then once I came back to, to, to center is when I, I saw petrol with like a, a merry-go-round, and then I realized that was the move one. And then I realized we were churning, we were churning milk again. Um, and this part, I, I still don't have all the information on that because we have the original churning of the milk that, that, that was the beginning of the galactic year that we just ended on December 21st, 2012. Um, I don't feel it was the churning of Grayson. I don't feel, you know, that, you know, on your personal journey, everyone churns their milk um, and you turn it into butter. Um, and that's how you get your psychic gifts and, and your abilities and, and your accomplishments and you move around on your path. So we, everyone churns their own milk with their own moo cord. I still don't know what that was. I honestly, and it's bugging, and you know, I'm on a need to know basis. I just don't know that I'm ever going to know. I don't, I, I think it's one of those things that we're not supposed to send out. So I don't know why I was going in circles, but it really made me want to throw up. It was, it was, it was that intense, but I know it was the moo cord and I know it was petrol and I know he was going somewhere with that. He, he went to the moon and I don't know what happened after that. It was almost like I blacked out. I honestly, <laughs> poof, there goes Lisa. Okay. Um, and then what happened after that? Then, then we got to the space element, to, to the ether. And um, Oh, that's when I got, whoa, that's when it got really heavy. Now I'm remembering. It, when we got to space, everything changed for me personally. I don't know for you. Then I felt the world's, it's like all the whole empath thing just went in overdrive. And I felt like I was feeling all the world's sorrows and hopelessness. You know, so I, when, when we got to space, I was like, Psh. that's because you're a land, air and CB. And I was oh. just trying to stay on my meditation cushion at that point because my, my body's the <laughs> you're taking off. My body's the portal. I was just sending it to her and she's just doing her thing. I was just trying to hang on to my little cushion there. You know, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Like it's a little bit there, you know, I'm out of my Oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's right. When we got to space, it was like, you know, I had this wild ride feeling, this energy. I really felt like a cat, like a cowgirl or something. Woohoo! You know, I was like, let's go. And it was just so exciting. And then we got to space and I just got clobbered. Yeah. Yeah. So at least it's trying not to throw up. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, whoa, I got like some deep, deep, deep stuff. Yes. And, and okay. then came the blowtorch where we could hear a blowtorch. And I didn't know what that was. I, I knew it was petrol 
I knew I knew he was burning this path, but um, it, it wasn't until my my um, a couple of days later I did a clearing on another person, and once we got to the fire sign, I saw torches coming out of his head and out of my head. Completely forgot about you and your torch it, it totally it oh. just totally left me but um and i didn't know what that was and and i told him i didn't know what it was and i'll have to write to him because now i understand when when you study deep esoteric information and as you come through doth and you come all the way up the kati channel which which i wrote about um and you come up into into the true third eye which jessica you know, has beautifully depicted in her painting, you come out the top, okay? And that's what that is. And they actually show a flame. I they was just going to say, flame. that must be the, the, you know how last time I kept bringing up the violet flame of purification, that Petro kept bringing that, that, mm -hmm. that purification, the violet fl flame, and that's the crown chakra. Okay. That's what that is, and everyone has talks about the violet flame. That uh, what whatever they were using as the violet flame wasn't, and I hate to burst everybody's bubbles. I could never see it; it was never here. And then it wasn't until I went into these old, and I mean old, old, ancient uh, pictures back in a time when when this was here. Okay, and and even going back into Egypt when when we mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. before the age of pisces when we were in the upper part of the yeah. galactic year that that flame was there it was attainable after the moon once you had the fall of lucifer when we yeah. crossed the right hand of ascension that's when the evil really overtook the moon in the age of pisces which of course is a water sign okay fish fish nagas so it was a perfect time for them to do that that flame went away you couldn't get through doth if you can't get through Doth, you have no chance of getting that flame. Now that flame comes, at, you know, with the attainment of the rainbow body. You know, that's 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 even above, kind of like the rainbow body. Um, that, that's that's really high stuff. Um, but that's what that is. It's back, uh, and and I saw it coming out of me. I don't have it, but it's here. You know, I I feel like you know ma many of us play a little role. I, somehow my I feel like my body played a role in in, in 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 bringing that back and so did my client that that was the recipient of of this ritual and it was a male a very balanced male that that I did this ritual for um, so I, it had to be a guy I guess that we we connected our our, our energy perfect sense with all the stuff I was saying last time and I'm like where am I getting this because we also brought up the aspect of Nicole talking about divine masculine oh I forgot that the, the return of the divine masculine how important it was to focus on that so you have the violet flame the divine yes. masculine that makes yes. sense and that and that has happened as as a matter of fact like this weekend I don't know if anyone felt it but there was a shift in the divine male and what I always call the office of Michael, and I did a whole show on the office of Lucifer and the office of Michael. We did this last year. The office of Michael is not the same anymore. It's under new management. It's under new management. Um, it can't, to call it the office of Michael, uh, I mean, you have the Michaels there, but the main guy is not. So that energy has shifted and it truly is divine male energy now and i guess maybe that torch with my male client you know yeah okay well as we're talking it's making sense because i just because right. it couldn't be there with a michael the way he was until until he left and then then because purple is what red plus blue it's divine feminine uh -huh. blue and divine masculine red and so yeah we, yes we want, and the divine, masculine and the divine feminine will have a completely different persona later on we can even fathom right. what, what what divine will be like i'm just want to put it out there that's People true can go and dig because it starts now very true well said very true mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, I need to bring in Melissa because um, 
I want to kind of connect how the white horse, horse, she wrote about this, how the horse is connected to the frog. It's, um, where's my knife? Uh, yeah, well, the horse, um, originally, when I first got in contact with you, I noticed, I think it was your article, on the white horse prophecy uh, because I I um, was given a, a symbol, a personal symbol and the name came through hippo and so I sort of looked up looked up um, what hippo meant in Greek it meant white, white horse and then that led on to all the hippocampus stuff that we all day talked about um, and it's interesting that it's it's the place that joins the subconscious and the conscious mind where your your short short term memory is converted into long term memory. So it's it's that joining of left and right brain hemisphere, the upper mega energy. Um, so that's what led me first to Lisa and at the, I saw something she'd written about the white horse. Um, uh, and then the the uh, I, I did a meditation with a, a girlfriend on uh, I think it was the 11th of January this year, and uh, she's quite psychic. And we were just told that we had to come together um, at her house, which ironically is on a river facing the water. And um, we had to, uh, I was told to find on my compass on my phone, we were just on the zero point, which is right on the uh, point from north to south where there is no degrees. And uh, we were told we were going to do a DNA activation. I had no idea what that meant or whatever, we just said to do this meditation and um, so we did and we did speak to each other through it and uh, during the meditation we were both told to lie down straight, that our spines had to be straight, we weren't communicating to each other, we were both just lie down at about the same time and the Probably only took about, oh, not even 10 minutes. And uh, I, all of a sudden, uh, a white horse in the form of Pegasus showed up that I hopped on. <laughs> and it flew me to a place that I was told was the 13th gate. And uh, I think I had... I remember I had uh, Isis on my side, Cirrus on uh, the right hand side of me, and I think Saint Germain was behind me, who ironically is the keeper of the purple, the violet flame. So that's interesting. Um, and it only took about five minutes. We were taken to look like a big white uh, temple. And I, they ushered me inside uh, the beam, I guess you could call it, that opened the door to let me in was, um, I don't know how to talk, but like, looked like a giant. I have no idea who that was. And we were ushered in, or I was ushered in, um, with light on like a, a white quartz, um, table and I just lie there and I said okay it's done and go back I was ushered back outside again and then was back in back in my body lying on the grass and uh, and then we both just sort of looked at one another and I, I said to her I'm not going to say anything you, you tell me what what you saw and she said oh well straight away a, a white Pegasus horse turned up <laughs> and uh, I jumped on and they took me to this 
like Crystal Castle. I thought, oh my goodness. Okay, and she said, did you lie down? They told me to lie down. They're doing something to my spine. I just couldn't believe it. It just blew my mind. Like, it be exactly the same story. And um, she, she, and when we turned up, it was really funny. I was, um, I was all in like a blue sapphire colour, even our clothes. Uh, I had the I had blue pants on and a white top, and she had exactly the same colour top on but white pants. We were like mirrors of one another, and uh, I had a big uh, pyramid shaped this is so delight crystal I just felt I needed to take with me and uh, that was when we first set up and said oh I, I, I um been told I need to have this sphere crystal sphere with us um and I said oh what's that it was really really dark my my pyramid one is mainly in white it just splits with blue in. and she said oh it's so delight that um and hers was a, a blue, mainly blue, but just with a, a, a so it was the, the exact opposite of um, that I that I had, and and then a lot of things came up too about um, the sacred geometry of squaring the circle, which is all in that flower of life sacred geometry. Um, and she has also had where she's setting up like a clinic in her home and I only realised which I think I told Lisa um, the last time I went there I didn't say anything about the frog she's put all these giant meditating frog statues <laughs> that are through her garden where her healing clinic is going to be so I think she's very much connected with the frog as well um, I also had a frog uh, turned up in my garden, which I've never seen here because Australia is actually quite dry in parts of it. Um, and he's now living in a next door neighbour's pond. Also, during that week, I had a client that I we sort of share experiences. Um, had a frog turned up in her kitchen that they found their cat pouring and playing with. It just sort of appeared in their kitchen. Um, that they say to put back out in the garden. Um, and that was also in uh, Australia when that all happened. We had flooding, flooding rains, hurricanes. Um, yeah, just, just heaps and heaps and heaps of water uh, that week. And um, so what else did, sorry, I think I've gone off track. What, what was the original question about the frog, the horse and the frog? Yeah, well, no, you, you, I'm so glad you brought up all the DNA stuff because that was the last article that, that we wrote. Yeah. And I, um, that was actually last year and I had the strange desire to return to my mystery school roots and my mystery school teacher and um and i had a a real physical dna activation before you had that and remember during the session you told me that yeah. said, oh my yeah. gosh i just actually i just actually did that and that was the birth oh. of our of that other article because um i was the physical vessel for that <laughs> that was really cool but one thing and i think is so cool about connecting the horse and the frog, and this is what Melissa found. She found this this picture of a horse's hoof, and in the middle of it, it's called frog. Frog, yeah, frog. And and, and it's actually um, the it's, it's like uh, Gabriella, who's probably no more than me, but uh, I looked it up. But it's like a, a pump, and so when the horse's um, pressure is put on the hoof, it it pumps the blood. Uh, Back up the leg. So in a way, I, when I read it, I sort of got, oh, well, that's sort of like um, the analogy for the craniosacral as well. That it, it um, and all the parts of the horse as well. When I looked into it further, around the frog, there's parts of it that's called um, 
the solar gate and the lunar the lunar um, lunar pathway or something, and then that leads to uh, something else called it was, it was well, anyway it was the path that led to the frog was solar and lunar and death to do around death that then went into the frog to be pumped up. Now, of course, well, there's the, the male and female and the death rebirth thing in, in the horse's hoof, just the parts that it's called, um, which is in the way as well. So to me, there's, there is some connection between that and our uh, cranial sacral connection with what you're talking about, the colostrum oil, is, is uh, to me, it's our connection to the divine. And so if that's blocked, if you have a fog in your spine, uh, that doesn't flow, your kundalini doesn't flow. So it's, it, it, like you said, it can't go up any further to make that, that connection. It's, it's all, again, the microcosm in our physical body for um, the connection to the divine. And it, it's, it's, it's in the horse as well. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we, we have five minutes left and, and I, I want to, you know, make a note to, to talk more about the, the horse's hoof and, and that, and with, with okay. Gabriella, you know, we all have to pick another date to get together to finish the show. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of soon, you know, be, be before the information, you know, it just kind of dies out. But um, yeah, I, I, I want to go into that because you're, you're correct. And petrol healed that. Pet, petrol and Jeremiah together healed that, and which makes sense why we've been having frog, frog uh, um, experiences combined with the white horse experiences because they're connected and and i never would have known that if you, you know you're the one that found that diagram i that just blew me away um but then uh my friend nancy who boy she, nancy keeps me on my toes i just have to tell you this and she wrote this on 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 my blog and i didn't get back to her yet because I don't have an answer yet. I kind of have an answer, but I, uh, hopefully by the next show I will. But it says she's talking about the crop circle that was near White Horse Hill. Um, and I, I, I'm getting a handle on what that is, but I don't want to talk about it yet because I'm letting it cook. You know, hopefully I'll have some, I'll have some experiences with it to share before the next show you know, the, this frog information and the, um, this whole thing has been cooking for me for months. This was the hardest article I had to write. It took me freaking forever to write this article because it just wouldn't flow. And, and I know why it wouldn't flow. It didn't flow really until the nodes of the moon change. I mean, I didn't put it out until, um, May 22nd. It had to be a great day, but it took me that whole month. You can ask Melissa. I mean, I was just, it was just, my head was hurting or everything. It was just so hard. I had so much interference writing this article and it was because of the, of the moon. She was doing work on me remotely. <laughs> I was writing it because I'm clenching my teeth and I was getting pain in my arms. It was horrible. And then it finally flowed and then, and then, and then it was all good. But, um, uh, next time we're we're gonna go into Sana's experience. You know, like I said, the very first thing that came out of her mouth was an airplane. Uh, she and I'll just give you a little teaser. She was on an airplane with and her I, experience. And I actually, it just came to me when you were talking about your session, uh, Gabriella's session, is that I feel that I actually had the five element ritual on the flight. My last flight when I went to this island that we're, that I'm going to show or talk about. Yeah, probably you, 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 you could have, but what, what, just to give a little teaser to the next show, um, there's two eggs of creation. We, you know, we only thought there was one and, and I had a vision. I had, didn't know what the heck it was until finally, you know, we're working with the, with these women and, um, 
Gabriella and Melissa were the the moon egg, and then we have Sana um, and 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 Andrea and I to a, to an extent we we were the Earth egg, and that work for Andrea and I started long long time ago. Um, but you know we needed a wisp, and that's where Sana. Oh man! Hey, I have to I have to add something. I forgot, I and I have a picture. I have oh, okay. Hurry up. Okay, I, I, I have to I was, <laughs> I was making eggs on Sunday morning, and I opened an egg, and there were double, a double yolk. It just popped right in. Bing. And I was oh. like, oh, what does that mean? And it's always been a huge sign for me. I only had that once before in my life. And yeah, and you wow. just talked about the two eggs. I'm like, oh, yeah, I completely forgot about the Anyway. There you go. Yay. There you go. Well, thank you everyone for joining us in in the chat, and and thank you to Sana and Melissa and Gabriella. And we have to make a an, another date soon, very soon. Coordinate our our schedules for for the next show, uh, because this this is just amazing. It's just so so enlightening. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.